Hi, my name is Leilani, and in this video, by popular demand, I'm going to be sharing with you a flip through, review, how we did it in our home, and also at the homeschool co-op that I do stuff at. These books right here, this is an astronomy curriculum. The first one, this is not a curriculum, this is a book. It's a really good book. I'm going to talk about this book, Taking Back Astronomy, and also The Stargazer's Guide to the Night Sky, which is a curriculum. It is written, both of them are written by Dr. Jason Lyle. I'm going to go ahead and stick links to all of those down below in the description box. I'm also going to place some timestamps down there, so if you need to skip ahead, go backwards, all those things, it's going to be down in the description box below. So a little while ago, I made a video where I shared all of my homeschool science curriculum. Why do I have so much homeschool science curriculum? And that's because I teach science at a homeschool co-op. I've been doing it for over 10 years. Love it, love it, love it for middle school and upper elementary as well as teaching science to my kids. I have taught astronomy at least three times and I've been through lots of different resources. And like I said, by popular demand, people are interested in looking at this because I did talk it up a lot. It is my favorite astronomy curriculum hands down and probably one of my favorite astronomy books. I'm actually gonna start with Taking Back Astronomy. This is not a curriculum, this is a book. It's kind of like a companion book. You don't have to get the curriculum to get the book. You could get the book independent. I highly, highly recommend it. This is not just an astronomy book. It's like creation, biblical science, plus astronomy, plus presuppositional apologetics wrapped into one book. I, I love the title, like seriously. Taking Back Astronomy. <laughs> I don't have to say anything else. It's just a really good title. And it's not glossing over anything either. It's pretty deep. So I would recommend this for middle school, high school, and adults. But you can totally go through it with all of your kids. Because when you open this book, the pictures in this book itself are absolutely stunning. So even if you have a child that is younger and you have this book, you can just go through the pictures and read about the pictures and enjoy God's creation because it's beautiful. <laughs> now for upper elementary, I'll be honest, I did it with my 10 year old, no problem. In fact, this is, we just recently finished this book our second time around because I wanted to go back and just, because it's really good. My 10 year old understands this and follows through this. With the upper elementary, in our household, what we did, the first time through, we did it at the homeschool co-op with the Stargazer's Guide to the Night Sky. We read it in the classroom, we discussed it in the classroom, I assigned it for homework, readings from it for homework, I had them write essays on it. I So, so funny, I had an atheist in the classroom. That was fun. So that's how I did it at the homeschool co-op. At home, what we did, so one of my son, my boy, one of my boys was in the homeschool co-op, so he had already read this with me. So I decided to go through it a second time with my other kids. We would literally read a section. So when you open this book, it's, to, I'll show you, I'll do a flip through in just a second, but there's sections, right? So here's a section about comments. We would read this, and of course there's beautiful pictures, and we would discuss. I would set aside 30 minutes to an hour doing this, expecting that we might get through one or two sections, but that it would be deep, deep conversations. My 10 year old loved it. I love the way Dr. Jason Lau writes. Okay, you know, he explains that something is not going to work and he explains why it's not going to work. And as you're reading that, you're like, but what if you tried in your head? What if you tried this? And next paragraph is, well, answering that question that you're thinking. And then as you're reading that, you're like, well, what about, what about this? And then the next paragraph, he answers why that wouldn't work. It's almost like he takes you down this rabbit hole of ideas, of things that people have tried and ways to reason things out that just don't work. So much fun, especially with kids because they were all, the, the one that I'm thinking of right now from this book is extraterrestrial life and my kids were coming up with all sorts of different ways that aliens could be saved or not saved or how it were a work and Dr. Jason Lyle already figured it all out and explained it in the book. We had so much fun. It was like a little party in the living room and we were laughing and joking and cracking up. It was so good, it was so good. 
I love how this book really just sparks a lot of that conversation, a lot of that deep thinking, especially with the presuppositional apologetics and just turning everything back on the Lord. I also love how he pretty much puts the Big Bang Theory in its place. Definitely my favorite. Let me show you a little bit around in this book. So it's very simple. It has an introduction and then five chapters, and then it has some end notes. Uh, once again, the pages are absolutely beautiful. So chapter one is gonna be all about the splendor of God's creation. And as you move through the book, he's gonna point out different things, turning it all back to God. Chapter two is the universe confirms the Bible. So we're gonna talk about how the earth is round, the expansion of the universe. It's gonna talk about the earth floating in space. Now here's where it gets interesting. He's got little sections in here called creation in depth. This is for real in depth. This is like high school adult level right here. If you have a middle schooler, if they're very smart, you can try reading it to him, but he's gonna include some really deep stuff. I like it, and I know a lot of you guys will like it too, because it really, it gets to the meat of things, when a lot of astronomy books will just gloss right over that. Of course, he talks about conservation of mass energy, the ordinances of heaven and earth. Here's another creation in depth. This is about the law of gravity. Astronomy confirms the Bible. And then you get to chapter three. And this is gonna be talking about the age of the universe. It's gonna debunk the Big Bang. It's gonna give you good supporting evidence. It's got stuff about circular reasoning in there. Of course, Big Bang. Okay, I love this. Okay, just showing you this lovely. Talks about naturalism, distant starlight problem, which is something I personally had to hang up on for a long time until he explained that to me light time travel problems with the Big Bang, then we got the horizon problem right here. That's creation in depth, so it is really, really deep. Also, recession of the moon. He has a creation in depth on that one as well. Magnetic field of the Earth, all these things. Okay, so then you get to chapter four, and this is gonna be the Bible and modern astronomy. So you're gonna get a little bit of naturalism versus supernatural philosophy of naturalism. Where's antimatter? That's in here. It's a creation in depth. So good. Solar system formation, extrasolar planets, star form. Oh, it's so good. Oh, question of extraterrestrial life. Okay, like I said, that one was fun. Oh, and here's another thing too. He's a beast at citing things, okay? Well, first of all, anything that he pulls from scripture, he's got it covered with the, the address. But then, you know, you're learning about the aliens, right? And you're like, wow, I'd like to know a little bit more about that. Well, you go back to the end notes. Sometimes he'll just expand a little bit on it, but sometimes he gives you some books, some good reference books. And for those of us that have a hard time finding good biblical creationist perspective type books, he kind of did the job for me. And I am actually, some of these books I'm in the process of, uh, they're on, they're on my, my uh, wish list on Amazon. So chapter five is gonna be War of the Worldviews. And this is gonna be talking about some worldviews, what's the purpose of a worldview, the power that a worldview has, heliocentric and geocentric models. We're going to discuss this pretty much for the rest of our life. And this is one of those books because me personally, I'm in contact with a lot of people that like science, obviously, because I teach science at a homeschool co-op. It is something that I'm passionate about. There's people at our congregation that talk to me about it. This is equipping me as an adult and my kids as well, because they're going to come in contact with it. And if they do decide to go to college, they're going to come in contact with it again. So this is one that I almost feel like I need a copy for all of my kids. <laughs> Not just one, and this one's pretty worn down. All right, now we're gonna talk about the Stargazer's Guide to the Night Sky, also by Dr. Jason Lyle. It is not a apologetic curriculum. It is what it is. It's an astronomy book and appreciating God's creation, the stars. What I love about this book, it's not like other astronomy books where you're just glossing over a lot of things. I just feel like he doesn't gloss over things, okay? But it slows you down. It slows you down to just really appreciate going outside, looking at the stars, understanding how you can see them better, understanding how the earth moves, how the sky moves. It's so well written. It has inspired my kids to journal. We actually, when we did it at the homeschool co-op, I would have my students journal the night sky on a regular basis. I would have my students draw 
the nice guy tell me what they saw. Actually, in the back of this book, it comes with a planisphere. This thing is so much fun. <laughs> so basically, if you start this curriculum, and I highly recommend this, if you start this at the beginning of the year and you're using it for the full year, make sure you're referencing the sky with this thing. So you're gonna line it up with the months and the time and the dates, and then this is your sky right here. We also got a telescope, a pretty, pretty nice telescope, and it takes a while to set up, it takes a lot of patience, but we got to see the moons around Jupiter, we got to see Saturn, which always seems to look like a cartoon to me, and the moon, of course, we spent a lot of time looking at the moon. We also had the blood moon last year. Do you know how fun it is to homeschool your kids and tell them that you're gonna wake them up in the middle of the night to do school because they need to come see the blood moon in the early crazy crack of dawn. It was just so much fun because my kids were so into this. My son would set his alarm. It was just, it was just a family thing, okay? Oh, and another thing that we did, we have a museum, a pretty big one in our area that has telescope watching, or sky watch, it's called sky watch at night, where they set up all their different advanced telescopes and we go out to their parking lot and look at all the things in the sky and we just kind of bounce from telescope to telescope and I made it like a field trip actually for my students and it was awesome. It was it was really nice. So those are some things that you can do. Obviously you can visit a planetarium but let me show you this book so you can see what's actually inside it instead of just me talking about how much fun we had with it. So here's the book, Stargazer's Guide to the Night Sky. Now when you go to the table of contents, you're gonna see that it has 12 chapters plus an introduction and afterward. But let's go ahead and look at chapter one. And chapter one and chapter two are very similar because they're gonna be talking about the motions in the sky. So chapter one is gonna be the basics and then chapter two is gonna be more advanced. And when you go through this, it's really, like I said, it slows you down to just really appreciate the beauty of God's creation. It's gonna tell you all the details. Another thing he does is he's gonna reference the different pictures throughout the reading. Once again, beautiful pictures. Here's chapter two, just like I said, it's motions in the sky, but it's gonna be more advanced. I'm gonna talk about eclipses, lunar eclipses, total solar eclipses. I love, I love, love, love this picture. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the planets, but not in depth, because we're gonna go more into the planets later on, but this is just kind of how they move through the night sky. We're gonna talk about comets. Chapter three is about the eye. So you're actually getting a little bit of biology in this astronomy book. You have to appreciate the eye though. It's how you're going to be viewing the night sky. So slowing down, taking some time to just see how the eye brings in this information that it gathers from the sky. So, like I said, a little bit of biology in here. Pretty short chapter, but good stuff. Chapter four, this is gonna be looking at the night sky with the unaided eye. Basically what you can see without a telescope. Now what's nice about chapter four is, let's say it's winter time, you can look at the winter models, but you don't really have to look at the spring model until you get to spring. So you can kind of jump around a little bit through this chapter. Of course, you do want to read through things in between, but like I said, you can skip around a little bit to the models that you need to at the time that you need it. So here's chapter five. It's gonna be your celestial events. And this is the chapter that actually inspired us to find out when there were media showers to look at the blood moon that we had recently. They talk about the solar eclipses. He has some dates in here and how to view the sun safely without, you know, destroying your eyes. Cause you don't, you don't want to do that. What's really nice about this book is because you know that the author is a creationist, you know that he's a firm believer, he's big into apologetics. You know, you're not going to get a lot of the junk that some of the other astronomy books are going to give you like astrology, and just things that you don't even realize is junk that's inside some of those astronomy books. He's gonna keep it, it's gonna be good, okay? 
Chapter six is telescope basics, which is another one that inspired us to get a telescope. We got actually much bigger than that one. I'll show you at the end. Actually, our telescope looks like that. So there you go. Different telescopes. Like I said, this is where it came in handy for us to have a museum close by that actually had a bunch of very expensive telescopes that we could use and look through, but didn't have to set up. So that that's a plus, definitely a plus. And then you are gonna to come to chapter seven, which is how to observe things through a telescope. And then finally, chapter eight is the moon and the sun. So notice, literally the first half of this book is all learning how to stare at the night sky and appreciate what you have right outside your front door or back door, whichever door you use. Now, when you get to chapter eight, the moon and the sun, once again, he does not just gloss over it like a lot of other astronomy books do. He takes time to just show you the different things on the moon. He talks about lunar features, beautiful pictures once again. And then the sun, we go into the sun, very in depth. We're gonna talk about solar flares, the corona, a close-up look of a solar photosphere. Oh my gosh. Um, then we get to the planets, chapter nine planets and this one is a thick chapter pretty thick but it's going through all the different planets the gas giants the rock planets just it's all it's all the planets and chapter 10 now you're going to do star classification and telescope viewing all right you know i love the star classification stuff this was always one of my favorite things to study telescopic views binary stars more beautiful diagrams. This is stellar classification. I love this chart right here. This is gonna be deep sky objects. This one's gonna give you, I love this page. Just, just love this page. But it's gonna talk about all your different open clusters, star clusters, lots and lots of pictures. Then we've got some galaxies, the spiral galaxies, the different types of galaxies, irregular galaxies, best galaxies to observe, lots of pictures of galaxies. So chapter 12 is astrophotography. All right, so if you're interested in this, you can certainly do this. I failed miserably, I'll just be honest, but I did try, I did try. And then he's got his afterwards, which I honestly think everyone should read this because this is when he starts tying it into creation and biblical worldview and it's just, it's really good. This is the teacher guide right here. It's pretty straightforward. You know, you've got the outline, a suggested outline, and then all of the chapters, well, they're split up into worksheets with short answer. This one's the introduction, chapter one, worksheet one, worksheet two, worksheet three, pretty straightforward. And in the very back, you do have quizzes if you're interested in quizzing as well as answers. So like I said before, all the links are gonna be down in the description box below. Check them all out. I'm gonna go ahead and stick a link to the video that I was talking about before where I talk about all the all the science curriculum that I have and let me know if you guys have any questions about this book or any other books that you would like me to review let me know and until then I will stick some videos around my face and I will see you guys in my next video bye